morning, Facebook. How are you this morning? Hope your day is going well. Looks like another beautiful and sunshiny day. Not too, too hot. A um, little warmer in PA than New Jersey um, by about five or six degrees, but uh, still, still a pretty gorgeous day. Gonna definitely go sit around the pool once um, I've taken care of my responsibilities um, and uh, just kind of chill out and relax. Not going in the water yet, way too cold. Um, funny thing, uh, for those of you who saw who, you know, yesterday, um, and I had explained that I was in the process of prepping to um, recolor my hair sort of a silver gray. Um, just kind of blows my mind that uh, as we age, um, grays start to set in. And though I'm pretty fortunate and only have certain areas, um, mostly towards the bang areas on the sides that that tend to tend to get gray, um, how difficult it is to actually get um, a silver gray hair um, color for me. I mean, my daughter bleached me as blonde as I could possibly get. Um, and according to the box, it should have still come out, um, you know, at least uh, some semblance of close to the box. Um, which would have been a little bit darker gray than, um, you know, what would be for somebody who is ideally blonde blonde. Uh, so, uh, and needless to say, after multiple attempts and tweaking things and adding a little bit of black to the gray and so forth, we finally at least got it to the point where the purplish hue um, is not overwhelming. So, um, I'm okay with it. It looks okay. I'll try it again in a few weeks, um, with a little bit more stripping, um, and not, and a different, uh, brand of color. So, um, who knows? Maybe you'll see me looking like a shiny hip old man sooner or later. Um, you know, just around the corner. I guess my hair is pretty resilient because I've colored it, stripped it, um, and it's a wonder it's not falling out. Um, so many times in the last week, it isn't funny. So, um, today's title, <laughs> getting back on track uh, with the purpose of these videos on reflection, um, probably some of you dialing in might have thought this was a uh, Hair Care 101, which, by the way, I could use a haircut, but still not uh, barbers and stuff um, or haircutting places uh, open. And I do want a little bit more length before I have them do the tapering and, and all that anyway. Uh, but back on track. Um, today's title is, We Should Be Debtless, um, Lest It Be Love. Um, and this all comes from Romans 13, actually just verses 8 through 10, um, with really the core of what I'm going to deliver being um, from, literally from verse 8, but a lot of explanation from that, um, or towards that. So... You know, again, it's yet another scripture that drives home the importance of love that we as believers are to have, not only just in general, but especially for one another, the body of Christ, you know, our brothers and sisters. We are the family of God. Um, and I'm not talking slow because, you know, I think um, you can't keep up with me, but I, that is for emphasis because sometimes I think we really don't understand 
that in the Hebrew there are various words used for love, whereas in the English language, you know, we love hot dogs, we love our wives, um, we love baseball, we love our kids, and there's only one word, but in the Hebrew, um, there are multiple words for love. So what we're talking about is agape love, which is love that is capable that we in and of ourselves are not really capable of. Um, not to say that we're not capable of it for short bouts of time, but when we get pressed, squeezed, and so forth, um, without the source, Father God, um, and even with him, because of our fallen nature, we are going to fall short from time to time. So, especially, um, you know, in times, in all times, you know, not just bad times, but in all times, um, but especially a time when the world has people on edge, um, suicide rates and depression are skyrocketing, people are out of work and depressed and stressed. Um, they're shut in um, more so than normal. Yes, you know, like for instance, I speak that I go out mountain biking and, and so forth, uh, but my limitations on the number of people um, is usually one. Um, people are just not, you know, ready to just, you know, I walked into a, a Chinese um, takeout place the other day and literally thought that I was walking into the movie The Boy in the Plastic Bubble um, where they literally had isolated themselves completely from the customer floor area and even the food pickup where they put it through had a two door, um, you know, slip it through, then you open up the door. I, I mean, ridiculous things that aren't even going to protect if the virus were really there, um, any more so than, you know, the glass windows at, at Walmart. So, you know, People are um, are stressed. Um, again, like I mentioned, depression is skyrocketing. People's self worth is under fire. Um, you know, if you're out of work or you're not sure what to do, um, especially you know for men. Um, and you know, I didn't make that up. Uh, ladies, I'm not saying that you don't, in, you know, enjoy your work and take it as importantly too, but uh, men are just wired this way that we place a lot of our self-worth on our ability to provide for our families. It's why it's not uncommon for when a man loses his job to not necessarily run and tell the people that, you know, they trust right away because they're embarrassed, they're belittled. Um, so it is so easy when we're in these circumstances to slip up and not exhibit love, yet at these times, love is the one thing that we need to give and receive the most. Um, so God calls us to be focused on love um, that in Romans 13, 8, you know, so much that in Romans 13, 8, he tells us to let no debt remain outstanding. And I will break down and explain this, um, what is meant by these three points that are brought up in Romans 13, 8. But he tells us, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt of love 
for one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Now Romans 13, owe nothing to anyone. Although some godly Christians um, believe that this phrase prohibits borrowing, um, I personally cannot find any commentary um, or commentators who agree with that or any doctrine, aka scripture, to support this, this notion that God is telling us that we are never to be in debt. Um, there are many scriptures that regulate but do, but do not prohibit um, debt and borrowing. Um, Exodus 22:25, Leviticus 25:35 through 37, um, Deuteronomy 15:7 through 9, Nehemiah 5. 7, uh, Psalm 15, 5, and 37, 21, um, Ezekiel 22, 12, and Matthew 5, 42, and last, um, but I'm sure not least, Luke 6, 34. And also we have to remember that in the parable of the talents, um, the lazy servant at least should have put his money into the bank to give it back with interest um, as the story is told in Matthew 25 27 implicit in that story is that the bank pays interest by loaning money Jesus didn't condemn that system but rather he condemned the slave for not using the system to earn a profit. And so it is widely, you know, agreed on among scholars um, and in my own um, wisdom uh, that Paul isn't forbidding all debt in 13.8 of Romans but rather he is saying we must pay our debts when they are due. So at the same time, the Bible warns us against the danger of death, of debt. Um, Proverbs 22, seven says, the borrower becomes the lender slave. So often debt reveals underlying greed that drives us to buy things that we can't afford, um, or it reveals that we love the world and the things that are in the world, 1 John 2.15. Um, we want the status that goes with having nice things, and so we go into debt to get those things. Um, one of my pastors used to say that we spend our prosperity before we get it. Um, if we borrow too much and have to declare bankruptcy, um, it is not a good witness. And, you know, it is comparable to stealing, according to the Bible. Um, also, if we're in debt, uh, we're not free to give generously to the Lord's work. And so we need to be very cautious about taking on debt, especially for um, depreciating items. Um, never incur debts that you cannot pay on time. And, you know, we're all guilty of that, myself included, but this is what the Word of God is telling us. So in short, especially in unforeseen economic times such as these, that we have experienced in 2020, debt creates pressure and no one, no one likes pressure. Um, we are not called to live a life of pressure. We are called to live a life of peace and wisdom. But there is one debt that you will always owe and never be able to pay off fully. And that debt is love to others. You'll never reach the place 
where you can say, now I love others as much as I ought to. Not going to happen. Um, and so on. No matter how long you've been a Christian, whether you've been a Christian since May 17th of last year, or you've been a Christian as I have been since the early 2000s, um, no matter how much you grow as a Christian, you still have room to grow in love. Um, I wrestle with love just like everybody else does. It's just usually with more mature Christians, our recovery time for when we are unloving um, to the point that God's conviction um, and his word speaks to us loud and clear to go make things right when it's possible. Obviously, if you have an outburst with somebody in traffic, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to go find them. You know, of course, unless the, the Lord wills. But you can still repent of that when the other person is not accessible for you to be able to make things right. Um, so the biblical em emphasis on love is far from trivial and far from infrequent um, as far as the Bible is concerned. Jesus said that love is the distinguishing mark of his followers, uh, John 13, 34 through 35. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, um, in case they missed it, um, in the same discourse, he added in John 15, 12, this is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Um, and for those who might be a little bit slow at grasping things um, and might have missed it again, five verses later um, in John 15, 17, he repeats, this is that this I command you that you love one another. So think about it. Um, in three very short areas um, from John 13, 34, 35 to John 15, 17, Jesus basically says the same thing. And no, it's not that he forgot that he said it already, it's that he knows our thinking, he knows our um, prideful natures, he knows our fallen nature, and he knows our tendency. So therefore, um, reinforcement, um, and he wrote it three times to expect you to read it a million times. Um, so that you would get it. So if you don't get it, then you need to read it and read it and read it and read it and read it until it comes into you that you are to love one another. Um, and that is not just a cliche. That is an action. That is something that one can easily see. You may be able to deceive others but you cannot deceive God. Even if there is just one person in your life, um, you know, and I believe God puts every single person in our lives for a reason. Um, there are people that we bring into our lives that God never intended to be part of our lives. Um, and those are usually those toxic relationships, those things that have led to pain and suffering, um, those things that we did in our old person. But when God sends godly people into your life, um, you are not, you are not honoring God if you are 
rejecting them in any way and he knows um, and ultimately he will hold us accountable for when we do that um, so I'd say you know again with him mentioning it three times and me adding to the fact that that would imply that he expects you to read it a million times um, or however many times it takes because earlier we already discussed that it is a lifelong journey. We will never fulfill the debt of loving one another adequately. But I would say he was trying to drive a point home. And in Paul's last conclusion of verse 8, he reminds us that love fulfills the law and uses the next verse, 9, to remind us that verse 9, re as verse 9 reads, the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not commit murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, um, references um, to those particular scriptures can be found in Exodus 20, 13 through 15 and verse 17 as well as Deuteronomy 5, 17 through 19 and verse 21. And whatever other command there may be are summed up in one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Reference Leviticus 19, 18. So we are told that love fulfills the law and then he goes and repeats it again through Paul love your neighbor as you love yourself um, with verse 10 ending in a twofold reminder saying love does no harm to a neighbor therefore love is the fulfillment of the law so in this time of worldly friction godless activity the best advice I can give you and myself is to love one another and do our best with God's help with both love and praying our debts on the paying our debts on time. Um, if we give it to God, follow his plans, pray for our nation and our world and are quick to repent to God and others when we reacted out of pressure or harshly or hastily and not love uh, not the love God you know not loved um, so that God would be glorified um, others will see him at work in us um, when we are doing it right but they will see nothing when we are doing it wrong except for hypocrisy so um, when we're doing it right and we're loving as we should be trust me all eyes are on us from non-believers um, and when they see that there is a difference in the way that you live it draws them towards you because of the peace that they see in you who knows who God has you know who knows who God has on your plans um, today who he had on your plans a week ago two weeks ago three weeks ago whatever who knows who God had on your plans to save from heading down the wrong path and from allowing the situations that are going on today to cause them to either lose their faith, shy even further away from God, and more sadly for the moment, to fall into bouts of depression and even take their own life. So I hope today's Bible verse, um, all stemming from Romans 13, 8, 9, and 10, 
um, lot of action packed in that scripture um, in three verses. Um, so I would challenge you as I always do to not just take it from what I've shared here but to really dive into the Word of God. Um, most Bibles will reference the scriptures that I have, at least online Bibles definitely will, like Bible.com, um, which is very helpful so that you can see the other scriptures that I mentioned. Um, but, um, you know, as the Apostle Paul will say, May grace, peace, and love abound you. Um, may God's glory shine upon your face today. Um, and may you know the love that he has for you, that you may share the love with one another that he has called you to over and over and over again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Have a blessed day and we will see you again tomorrow.